Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's been way too long since I've last done a Hunting on Reverb episode, and it's also kind of been a while since I've done a Fender Friday. So let's go ahead and see what type of Fenders we can find tonight, as well as see all the changes that Reverb has made. So we'll limit this to electric guitars, used, and newly listed. So as far as new features here on Reverb, wow, this is something that this is the first time I've seen it. It appears shops can purchase their own little thing that shows up in search results. I have not seen this before now. If you want my feedback on that Reverb, this is kind of getting ridiculous though with your bump program and that. I feel like that should maybe replace the bump segment if you're doing that. But that's a pretty new feature. I'm sure they'll dial that in a little bit. And the only other new feature that I'm aware of within Reverb site this time is they made a slight adjustment. Just in case you missed it last time, under product specs, you can see how long ago the instrument was listed, but they finally brought back the offers. So for a brief period of time, the watchers actually appeared within this box, but then they brought the offers down here and I thought, well, that just makes sense to bring the watcher count down there too. So I'm officially okay with the new reverb layout. I think they've done a nice thing here. Everything's kind of compact. Yeah, do I still have a fondness of the old style? Sure, but this is definitely 100% functional. Nothing I see is like defective at this point in time, except for maybe sometimes this is a little bit laggy yet. But as you can see tonight, for the most part, it's been working pretty well. So what do we got here? Whoa, why is that $25,000? Okay, Fender Custom Shop, Eric Clapton Blackie. Okay, there comes a bunch of stuff. Oh, Yuri Shishkov, he makes some great stuff. We've covered his bedazzled Stratocasters. Let's take a quick look at this thing. Looks like this is just a custom shop kind of aged reissue type thing with the Eric Clapton vibe. Usually when I'm going to spend $25,000 on a guitar, it's got to be something super special. Like there's got to be fancy painting and artwork that's been recreated, not just a relic job. But wow, look at all those springs. One, two, three, four, five. They even got the part where it's burnt by a cigarette right there too. Oh, uh, okay. That's another thing that's probably making it expensive. It's from 2006, so it's 14 years old. It's probably a limited edition run that collectors need. And it's currently located in Japan, and that's where all the best stuff goes, so that must be a premium piece. Hmm. This is kind of interesting. It's not like the highest quality wood that I've ever seen, but interesting. So it appears we have a genuine Fender bullet neck. Okay, so that's not even super expensive. I, I've had a bullet before. Yeah, it was the Bullet 3. These things are kind of strange Stratocasters that are like baby size, but I remember loving that guitar. But that was also before I had a lot of experience with other Stratocasters. It'd be fun to revisit some of the other ones, especially the Telecaster style. So this is just kind of a, a bunch of natural wood grain. I kind of like that the pickup is just missing. It almost looks like it's just an invisible pickup on you. Ooh, that neck even has some nice bird's eye to it. That is a really nice neck for one of those guitars. $14.99. I, I don't quite see why it would be that expensive because even one of these Fender Bullet 1s, I mean, here you can see they range anywhere from like 500 to 600 bucks. Well, at least the sane sellers of them. So if you were to just take the neck off of one of these guys and then make your own custom body, I mean, I would imagine that neck could be worth, what, between 200 to 300 bucks? I'm not the most well-versed with Fender parts. This one just seems a little bit overpriced because I don't put much value within that body. Moving on here. Nice. Jazz Master from 1970. I think, like, the golden era of Jazz Masters is, what, the 60s? I'm not really familiar with what the differences are between the 70s and the 50s ones. I remember briefly touching upon this in my research, but this is just kind of a nice jazz master. Looks like you got some nice play wear on there. It appears to be in pretty clean shape though for a 1970. But you're missing the toggle switch tip. That's easy enough to replace. Cool, so what's the story on this? Super clean, classic, original 1970 jazz master. 3600. Let's find out, is that a deal or a steal or just regular? 
Well, comparing it to other prices, it looks like there is a, a Jazz Master from Chicago Music Exchange. That one looks like it might have some modifications. There's a couple of beat up ones, but that's a custom color, so that changes the whole game. And there's another one from Japan at four and a half thousand. So it looks like some of the solder joints have been touched up on Chicago's. But I guess everything else is technically correct on this one. So if you comparison shop, this is how you can tell if you're paying a fair price or not. You gotta look at the other stuff that's available. So this one also appears to be really clean. Let's move on to page two. This one kind of reminds me of Robert Baker's vintage Stratocaster. I'm sure he'll come over again another day and we could document his vintage Strat then. That'd be fun. I think he's getting it refretted by Joe Glazier or something like that. Ooh. Vintage Fender Blackguard Esquire. Even refinished, apparently still worth around 20 grand. This is in Australia. So the Esquires, they're like Telecasters, but they only have the bridge pickup. And I think they came before the Telecaster. That's the way it goes. You can check out the broadcaster review and demo right here, where I kind of briefly touch upon that a bit more. That's a really nice see-through blonde finish. That's some good wood grain there. There it is. Fender Esquire. It's just something about seeing, you know, a strange title on this guitar as compared to like the Telecaster. That's what makes these things special. Oh, it looks like we got a couple of the mini Stratocasters here. I'm sure one day I'll have one of these on the show, but I, I, I like to space my mini guitar reviews apart. But something about the triple pickups on this one, it, it just looks a little bit too goofy. But if they left it with only two, then it would also look goofy again. But if you're interested in mini guitars, feel free to search Trogly Mini. You will find a bunch of mini Les Paul reviews. Jeez. You know, Fender knows how to make some really crazily priced instruments. There must be that niche buyer for Fender guitars that are willing to pay this much. Gibson doesn't do as much art guitars, or at least they don't show up so you don't see them too much. If you want to see some cool stuff, check out the Acoustic Room. We cover some of those art pieces from Gibson. But this one, it just appears to be some sort of a quilty flame top Stratocaster. What makes this thing so expensive? 2019 Fender Nam display, okay. Master built wine burst, Dale Wilson. Yeah, it just seems like it's a vintage style Stratocaster with a flame top. I, I don't quite understand the appeal of this one. I mean, the neck isn't even like heavily flamed or anything. But, you know, against this nice burgundy case, I can see what they're talking about. It is a nice looking Stratocaster, but I think one of the rarities ones would get you something very similar. Ooh. Wow, they haven't sold that yet? I thought for sure somebody would have made an offer. I did a wiring on that. But that is starting to become a very attractive price point here. A used Meteora at $654. So I think brand new, these things were $1,000. That's almost half price. I guess I haven't looked at the market on these in a while. What's happening here? Looks like you get some B stock stuff. There's local pickup only at 650. Yeah, I guess that appears to be right. They might just be kind of blowing these out or they're just floor models. It looks like you can get pretty much any color you want here for that 654 price. What's going on with this one though? This one looks so different, doesn't it? But it's just the camera angle, how the chrome covers didn't catch it and reflect it color just looks super dark. I'd be pretty tempted to pick one of these up at $500 because that's when I feel this would be a great value. Oh, I see. This is a 15% off sale. So you likely probably couldn't get them down to 500, but if you want one of these for about 600 bucks, I bet they would do it. But they do have two of these. So we'll try them. If I can get one for 500 bucks, I know I can probably sell it for about 600. We can break even and review a Meteora. Next up here, I'm not seeing anything on page four. We'll see what five is. There's a pink Squire Bullet Stratocaster. Oh, wow. When did they do this? Fender Coronado 2 Modern Player. That seems very attractive. I'm used to seeing the vintage ones being like eighteen dollars to $3,000. Looks like they have, what, TV Jones pickups in here? 
Like, what? <laughs> what is the point of this photo? To show you how nice and shiny and reflective it is, I guess. Or they have issues like me. Like, I try to make the ceiling not reflect in the guitars, but it just happens anyways. That's a pretty cool model at that price point. Oh! A used Pale Moon Telecaster. I did do a review on one of these if you're interested in checking that out. But that one was purchased through my new Guitar Day program where I helped them get a discount. I believe these things brand new were $2,000 and they might be out of stock. I'm not sure. They're Guitar Center exclusives. As far as this fretboard goes, not super impressed by it. The quilt tops on these, they're more like photo flames. The one I had anyways didn't move a lot. So if you're looking for a really nice example of one of these, definitely seek out something that has a lot of nice figuring in your eyes to the fretboard. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Somebody stole the limited edition case and they're giving it a Gibson USA gig bag? What? Maybe I'm wrong here. Were they $24.99? Okay, there we go. $24.99. But if you're interested in one of these used, it looks like they have two of them here. One in Connecticut and Florida at $17.99. Wow, that's actually a pretty good deal. And this one comes with a case. The fretboard, not my favorite, but it's okay. Let's check out that other one. Ooh, I kind of like this one. Um, It's very, very wavy and streaky. That's a good deal if you're in the market for one of these. I kind of forgot that they were $2,500. Wow. But at this price, that, that just doesn't make any sense. You might as well just buy from Guitar Center. You have to get charged sales tax on reverb anyways. But the reason why this thing will sell first is because people aren't looking at Guitar Center's website. They're probably on reverb, just searching for Pale Moon Fender. Oh. And that's the only one that they're going to see from that lineup. I had heard about these, but I could not find it when I was making that review and demo. So these are those custom shop ones that have the top of Pale Moon Ebony. In my opinion, mm, kind of an ugly guitar. <laughs> kind of reminds me of one of them spalted maple tops. I can see why these are sitting brand new at five grand, not selling. <laughs> Definitely makes a better fretboard material. We got two more pages to go through. I'll go through lucky number seven. Six is kind of a bust here. Just a bunch of regular stuff. Where's the specialty? Ooh, there we go. I made a wiring about these when they first came out. They were initially a UK exclusive. And now I get people messaging me all the time like, hey, it's not UK exclusive. It started that way, but I seriously think it was my video that made Fender go, huh, maybe there's a market for these outside of the UK. It's just kind of a cool triple pickup Stratocaster. You get the black headstock with the amp styled knobs. There's also like a red and a black color, I think, that are two pickups. I think these brand new were about a thousand bucks though. Okay, $899.99. But that one's on sale brand new for $764. I can definitely see this selling. I mean, if you can haggle them down 50 bucks, it'd be okay. This is another one of those things like, yeah, I mean, if he, he wants to give it to me for 500 bucks, I'll take it. But other than that, I think I'll pass. But you never know until you try. I would definitely not mind reviewing that model. And we'll do one more page just for good measure here. One last cool guitar. There's got to be something that we haven't talked about before. Come on. How many pages? Whoa. Okay, I've already reviewed the Jazz Telly, but that is a spanking deal. This is really tempting. I think I sold my Jazz Tellies for like 1300 bucks. This one's got a couple of dings right there. Small impression, that's nothing. Don't worry about it. It's a satin finish on the back of the neck anyways. But they're not open to offers. Ah, and the tremolo arms missing. I'm sure it's not that hard to replace them, but I'm going to leave this to one of you guys. I'll put the link to this one in the description. Trust me, these are amazing guitars. So I hope you enjoyed hunting for Fender guitars with me on Reverb.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow for an unboxing episode. Take care.
Oh, and we're gonna review this guitar this weekend.